those are some beautiful shots of the Humber North Campus and another beautiful shot right here of inside the Hawks Nest. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hawks Sports Network. It's time for some volleyball. It's the Shader Bruins taking on your Humber Hawks. It's been a little bit. We're finally back here, and Manny, I'm excited. My name is Zach Benoit. I'll be giving you the play-by-play -play for this matchup today. I'm excited to see it. You know, Humber has been so dominant in volleyball all season long. Last time we saw them, it was a 3-2 victory against Conestoga. They went on the road, won three straight, and they are dominating, Manny. Yeah, right you are. The Humber Hawks are having a phenomenal season with an 8-0 record, sitting in first place of the OCAA Western Division. The team is feeling a game in and game out, and that's also partly due to the roster. They're communicating really well. They're, on, they're in sync, and they just have insane chemistry right now, and that allows them to take on any opponent on the road or at home. For sure. It's going to be an exciting one. Cannot wait. It's, it's, they've been playing very good all year long. 27 sets they've played, and they've only dropped four. That's an 86% winning rate. Manny, you got to take that in for a second. 86% winning rate just in their sets alone. 100% win rate in the matches. And yeah, well. Lovely little O Canada there. You see the players on the court getting ready. And like I said, Manny, it's volleyball all night long, starting off with the women's teams and then the men's. We have a little look at the standings the right there, Humber the at the top. The but once again, we're going to cut it to our PA announcer, Dwayne Bowles, for the player introductions. A five and eight right side out of Regina, Saskatchewan, number three in Emily Williams. A 5'8 outside hitter act in Ontario, number 8, Madison Forrest. A 5'11 in the middle out of Toronto, Ontario, number 9, Caroline Clinch. A 5'10 outside hitter out of Istanbul, Turkey, number 11, Nisha A 5'7 center out of Mary, Ontario, number 12, Brittany Dunlop. A 5'8 middle hitter.
And now, the starting lineup for your box as put together by head coach Chris Wilkins. A 5-5 center out of Pickering, Ontario. Number three, Stephanie Armstrong. A 5'11 middle out of Scarborough, Ontario. Number four, Kiyomi Ellis. A 5'7 left side out of Windsor, Ontario. Number six, Megan Hutt. A 5'10 middle out of Uxbridge, Ontario. Number 11, Alex Dubé. A 5'10 right side at a Scarborough, Ontario. Number 12, Tiana Stevenson. A 5'8 left side out of Uxbridge, Ontario. Number 13, Erica Dodd. Your starting libero out of Ajax, Ontario. Number 2, Alex. La Chapelle. Well, Manny, the players introduced. Shout out our PA announcer, Dwayne Bolts, for making it hype as always. But, you know, we, we talk about the matchup, Humber versus Sheridan. The last eight meetings, Humber has only dropped one set to Sheridan, and that was away back in 2019. Humber has won 49 consecutive meetings against Sheridan. Last loss coming in 1992. Manny, that was almost 10 years before I was born, so just take that in for a second. Yeah, right you are, Zach. And that's also partly due to the roster of the Humber Hawks that they have. And, uh, Two players that are having a sensational season right now, Hannah Manners and Stephanie Armstrong, with an insane connection. Manners ranks third in the OCAA for hitting percentage with an average of 347, and Armstrong second in the OCAA with assists per set with an average of 768. Armstrong in the starting lineup, Manners probably gonna join in eventually later, but two players to keep an eye on. For sure, and we are off. Erica Dodd already having a kill. Yeah, that's one player you got to keep your eye on, Erica Dodd, Rookie of the Year last year and just continues to elevate her game, has been doing all season and gets Hummer the first point. And just to take a little dive into the team that will be playing tonight, Sheridan, not, you know, off to a little bit of a rough start. One and seven, lost their last matchup, three, one against Fanshawe. So they need to, they're going to be trying to rebound here. But Manny, there's a player on the court right now Acting as the libero is somebody you want to, you know, highlight a little bit? Yeah, Sarah Palutini right now for the Sheridan Bruins, having a sensational season herself, ranking second or third in the OCAA for standings for digs with average of 370. So Palutini, someone to keep an eye on on the side of the Bruins. For sure, and Kiyomi Ellis right there, service ace to none other than Palutini on the other side. Humber already up 3-0 here in set number one. Another hard serve by Ellis. Sheridan will try to set something up. Big hit coming over. Kiyomi was there, but unfortunately just ricochets off her, goes out of bounds, so Sheridan will get their first points of the match. Serving for the Bruins, number 11, Sean Pecos. Sean Pecos. First serve out of bounds there. Interesting little thing there, Manny. Pekas out of Istanbul, Sheridan Turkey. Yeah, I traveled from a long distance away to join the Sheridan Bruins. And there's oh, Stephanie Armstrong, the player you were highlighting. Yeah, Stephanie Armstrong continues to have a sensational season. Unfortunately, not able to get that one over the net, but another player on, that's going to be dangerous for the Hawks given any moment on the court. Serve over, serve good. 
Going out to Dodd. Sheridan trying to keep it alive and getting it over. Not going to be able to. Dubé going up. Alex Dubé. Yeah, Alex Dubé, another player Sir, on this team. A third-year veteran, someone with experience and uh, knows how to operate within this playing style. On the sideline, you can see right there, head coach Chris Wilkins, 21st season, 396 and 56 record. That's a big kill coming off the arm of Tiana Stevenson. And I found the back corner. The Bruins thought that one was going to be out of bounds, but perfect aim from Tiana Stevenson. And just hitting the top of the net was Erica Dodd on that serve, so giving it right back over to Sheridan. Serve going over, serve good. <laughs> Trying to get something here. Tiana Stevenson, nice tip over the net. Now Humber will get something going. Big kill, not gonna happen. At the net, the block comes through. And it was a little bit, a little bit of a tough go for Sheridan right there. Trying to get the first ball to the setter. It was a little bit of a miscue, which led to the little tip over and Bruins will take the first time out of the game. Man, you know, we got right into this game right away, really fast. I haven't really been able to talk about the national standings. And the Hawks now ranked the second team overall in those standings. Yeah, like you said, you know, Chris Wilkins doing a great job with this team and the, the roster. Like you said, any player, any given night can be impactful. So it allows you to keep all your players fresh, keep a healthy lineup. And that just shows on the record, like you said, national standing showing a second. And the depth of this team is just insane right now. Yeah, you look at it, only team that has a better record than Humber is the Durham Lords out in the East. They, have, they are 11 and 0. But Humber right behind them, 8-0, only other unbeaten team. So that is something to look at, you know. And this year kind of feels different. The, we saw last year the Hawks women's volleyball team, they had a really good team, very deep roster. But this year, you know, there's a little bit more there now. You know, the, the players that were first years have grown a little bit. They've gotten better, and the team is just that much stronger. And look at that one, the back corner. Alex Dubé finds it on the line. And like you said, uh, talking about players getting mature, and one player, a perfect example of that is Erica Dodd, acting like a third or fourth year veteran in this locker room, but only a second year player. Heads up play by number four, Kiyomi Ellis. The serve off of the hand of Dubé. Sheridan couldn't control it, went to the net, and just Kiyomi just took advantage. Don't know why, trying to hit it to the back court off the fingertips of Dodd. It's just going to be a dump here, see if Sheridan can get anything going. They're going to go out wide, but hit into the net. Unfortunately, that was Shy Shaylin Craig. Excuse me. Yeah, take a look at that play again. But Kiyomi Ellis putting up the wall. There you see it right there. Sheridan Bruins coming up. Kiyomi Ellis jumps up and gives them no room. And right there, just another, you know, the, the, the key thing, the key thing to look at, you know, it's always just trying to get that first ball to the center. That's, the, that's it's just, that's most important. And just so far, Sheridan hasn't really been able to get that rhythm going. Humber has been doing a phenomenal job just taking advantage of the, every just little mistake. Going out to Stevenson. Block comes through for the side of Sheridan. I'll try to set something up. And it was the little barrow for Latini trying to get it going, but called there for the lift and the timeout once again by the Bruins and the Hawks up big in set one, 12 to three. Manny, just, you know what? What have you kind of seen from the Bruins so far that you you want to maybe improve on? Well, we talked about at the beginning of the game here. Humber Hawks have been communicating so well; they're all in sync. But before we get before we dive into that, let's take a look at that replay again. Kiyomi Ellis with a sensational uh, jump there and priving a block. 
here you see the Sheridan Bruins get it there. You see Tiana Stevenson, Kiyomi Ellis setting up, but right there, unable to get it over the line. A little bit tough, but you know, the kind of thing I, I see is just, you know, Humber's just taking advantage of everything in Sheridan. They haven't gotten their footing set yet, and we know how hard it is to play in this building, but real quick, look at Howie Hawkins busting a move, bro. Yeah, sit down. You, you sit there, you gotta sit. Those are some fire moves. Take a rest. Howie Hawk just vibing here in the Hawks nest. Yeah, just enjoying the game so far and looking at the Hawks take control of this game early on. Like I was saying before, I rudely interrupted Howie's dance moves. It was more or less just, you know, Sheridan haven't been able to get their footing set yet. And Humber, just such an experience and such a well-driven team that if you give them anything, they're just going to run with it. And that's exactly what they've done. Well, one thing to notice about the Hawks is that if one player on their side is not in their position, someone else is always there covering the position. The Hawks don't leave any space open that they're not accounting for. Everything is a calculated move on the side of the Hawks. And again, like you said, it comes down to the side of Chris Wilkins. And that leadership comes down to play there. Right there. The dump over by the Hawks. Sheridan is taking advantage of it. Hit one into the wall of Kiyomi Ellis. And kind of hit off her hands, double hit, and too many hits on the side of Humber. And a good serve right there from Sheridan, a service ace. That was Madison Forrest. Oh, excuse me, no, that was Caroline Klitsch. Thought I saw number eight, but it was number nine. Got to get my glasses checked here, Manny, but it's okay. That's an appointment for tomorrow. <laughs> here we go, Megan Hunt. <laughs> Soaring through the sky like Superwoman right there. Hitting that ball to the back corner. Another point for the Hawks. Up 14 to 5. Yeah, Megan Hunt putting the force behind that one. Was on the hunt for the point there. And Miu Lorando checks into the game. She'll be the one to serve. Yeah, keep an eye on Lorando's knee, though. It does have the tense bandage on there, but another great libero on this team. Shaylin Craig, another big hit. Getting the point for Sheridan. And maybe this is it. You know, Sheridan trying to get their footing back in it. Like I said, this is a, this is a fairly new experience team. Yeah, especially coming into the Humber Hawks, the Hawks Nest, who are feeling their game right now, 8-0 on the season, and just continuing to dominate, dominantly collect points in this first set. That play right there might be my favorite when it comes to Kiyomi Ellis. She's so good at just turning on a dime to set up that outside hit. We know how dominant she is on the quick sets in the middle, but when she goes to the outside, turning on, turn on the one foot, phenomenal work. Megan Hunt serve into the net right there. Yeah, Kiyomi Ellis, like you said, such a versatile player on this team. And it's so trick, uh, it's so hard to cover Kiyomi Ellis because you never know what she's going to come up with, if she's going to send that ball with a strong kill or if she's going to do a little soft touch. Big kill by Erica Dodd. And it's just like it's her, it's her day job. Makes it look so easy. Let's take another look here with the replay. But it was just a great, great hit. Kao Mielis there controlling for the Hawks. Now it's Dubay getting into things now. Hit at the wall. Gets through Sheridan's two players jumping. And came onto the court, it was number 18. Our PA announcer, Dwayne Bowles, got it, but we didn't. It was Sarah Bindi. And a nice hit cross court right there. That was Emily Williams going across the net. And yeah, showing one side and going the other way. Emily Williams with a little trick play there to get the point for the Hawks, or for the Bruins, and break the momentum, or try to break the momentum on the side of the Hawks. So we'll try to keep try to keep it alive there with Sydney, unfortunately not able to. Yeah, 
Sarah Bindi giving it all, giving it her all, but just running out of room there. The first year player to Schaumburg, Ontario. Shout out Schaumburg. Dumped over now, but somehow finds a way to land. Unfortunate for the side of the Bruins and another just you know, key break for the Hawks. Yeah, it, was, it was a free ball that was sent over, and I don't believe the Bruins were ready for it. I don't think anybody was. Take another look at it right here. It was just a ball that's kind of got dumped over. And the Bruins not in sync. There's just no one there to get that ball. Allows the Hawks to get the point. Yes. Stevenson, while we were coming out of the replay right there, the big block, ball soared to the back line of Sheridan. So Humber will retake control, closing in on taking set number one, up 19 to nine. And Sheridan, it's just been a little bit rough to get things going, and oh my, Alex Dubé. Firing from all over the court right now are the Hawks just feeling it. The net goes to serve from Armstrong and retake possession. Another big hit there by Dubé. Hit in the backcourt. It's going to give Humber an opportunity to get something going. Stevenson. A huge kill to the back line. And Craig in the backcourt couldn't get there from the side of Sheridan. Yeah, Tiana Stevenson just unloading the power. And Bruins, like you said, not able to control that one, giving another Humber point. And a big hit coming off the arm of Madison Forrest. Went right into the block, but deflected and in play. So Sheridan, you know, down 10, but not going, out, not going down without a fight here in the first set. Trying to maybe make the comeback. Humber obviously going to do their best to not let that happen. As Megan Hunt kills that ball off some fingertips of the Bruins wall, and it goes out of play. Yeah, unfortunate block attempt there, but Humber slowly but surely creeping closer to the first set here. Going out wide, and it will land on the back line. Once again, Shaylin Craig coming through with that one. Yeah, it catches the inside edge in the back end there. Breaks the streak of the Hawks. Still down 10 points, lots of work to do, but able to get the service on their side for the Bruins. And coming in as the first year player to Campbell Ford, Ontario, Abby Ellis. She'll be serving right away. Quick set. Ellis hits that one hard, tries to tip it over now. And just a battle back and forth, but right there by Craig, just a little bit too much power. Yeah, that talks about the skill and the positioning of the Hawks there. No matter where the Bruins tried to go, the Hawks were there for a rebuttal and trying to send that ball over. The Bruins just not able to get that done. Hawks taking advantage of every single play right now. 23-12 here in set number one. Trying to go for the tip. Not gonna work and make it hunt now. Big kill. Diving bodies. That was Abby Ellis on the other side. Ah, just completely feeling it. The Hawks right now, they smell the blood in this first set. They smell the first set and they want to take it. And just miscommunication right there against the Bruins. Service ace. Now do it, Manny. Set number one belongs to the Humber Hawks. At a score, 25 to 12. And I mean, it was kind of just the story of the set early on. It was just, you know, Sheridan just couldn't find their footing. 
Humber taking advantage of really every little mistake. So that's just kind of how the trend of the game is going to go. Humber, you know, they'll look like they'll try to take it pretty quickly here. Well, like we said at the beginning of the game, right, we talked about their communication. We talked about their uh, chemistry. We talked about their positioning. Right now, everything seems to be in sync. As we mentioned, Humber Hawks 8-0. They look unstoppable right now, and they're a very difficult team to play as it is, but at home, they're even much more difficult to play. And the Bruins are finding out right now that the Hawks are just, why the Hawks are such a ter terrific team right now. And we talked about depth when it comes to the Hawks team. You know, a couple notable names not in the lineup tonight, actually. Ara Talan having a rest. Um, Sydney Ferguson also, you know, taking a, taking the rest, as well as Alex Kostanosic. You know, all those players have the night off. You know, relax. There ain't no start the year, and a lot of volleyball still left to go. This is, as you know, Manny, you know, the last match before that long Christmas break. So some players that obviously wouldn't get some starting time or some playing time normally, you know, let them onto the court, give them an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. That's just what Chris Wilkins Absolutely, and like you, when you have a record of such an 8-0, you, you can afford to rest your key players and switch players in and out of the lineup and keep them healthy and give, every, give, it, give everybody some rest and just, you know, allows the team to stay fresh and allows every player to stay fresh with a record like that. For sure, and we talked about, you know, how deep the team is. And, uh, you know, Manny, to pass the time, let's play a little bit of trivia. Now, the question, how many total players are on the court playing at one time in a sanctioned tournament play? Is it uh, A, 12, or B, 16? Yeah, that's a tough one, but you know what? I'm going to go on a hunch, and I'm going to say that it's going to be 12. you got the starting five players on one side and starting five players on one side. Each side getting a libero, making six and six. You got 12 players on the court at the same time. Now, I think, now hear me out. I think, personally, it would be very fun to have 16 v 16. If we can ever make that happen, OCAA, we got to make it happen. But right now, we're going to get right back into the action for set number two between the visiting Sheridan Bruins and the host home team, Humber Hawks. Looks like it'll be the, roughly the same, same six coming onto the court. Maybe a few changes, I believe I see. Yes, I do. Cassidy Andrews coming on, as well as Reese Cholette acting as the libero. And on the side of Sheridan, looks like it will be roughly the same six again. Fresh face Brittany Dunlop will be coming on. Oh, excuse me. It's Nyasha Jordan Tafari, not Brittany Dunlop. Like I said, I have to get my glasses checked tomorrow. I thought I saw 12, but it was 22, Manny. Yeah, it can be tricky to see the numbers sometimes when they're halfway turned. You see half of the number and you think it's one player, turns out to be a different player. I'm doing my best. I'm Happens trying. to I'm the trying. best of I'm us. I'm trying here, trying to provide some good play by play for our lovely listeners. And we're off and underway. First point will go for the Hawks. Tiana Stevenson once again providing that net, uh, net front presence. And that's the other thing with the, hum with the Humber Hawks. You got presence in front of the net for such great blocking, and then you have positioning on the back end. It really frustrates the opponent in terms of sending the attack. Big kill right there for the side of the Bruins. Madison Forrest. And maybe, you know, that's something to try to get some momentum. The Bruins on the year. They've won five sets, and they've lost now 22, was 21. Big, quick set to Cass Andrews. Yeah, Cassidy Andrews answers with a kill of her own. Kept alive. Going to be hit over, but into the block. Oh, Megan Hunt tried to play the fake out. Was going to go for the bump at first, but decided to try to 
spike it over. But... Yeah, that one was a little tricky. Yeah, take a look at that one again, Megan Hunt. That one was tricky regardless to start with, not able to get her all on it. Megan Hunt usually does not make mistakes like that, but unfortunately, there you see it, just the Hawks not able to get their all on that one. Tried to do a little trickery there, but obviously Bruins saw through it, and the point right there going towards the Bruins. Once again, the wall coming through, blocked off some fingertips and through the hands of Hunt on the far side. First lead of the night for the Bruins on the Hawks here. And once again, it'll be Bruins ball. Touching the net by, by one of the players there. Not sure who, but umpire and referee say both agreed on that decision. You highlighted at the start Sarah Pelotini. Uh, and, you know, she's trying to act as a spark plug right now for her side. Every time points scored, she's the one throwing her arms up, screaming her loudest, so trying to get some energy in her side. And it looks like it's working the Bruins. Another point here off of that kill. Yeah, Sarah Pelotini, just a second-year player on this team, one of the younger, one of the middle veterans. You've only got a couple of third-year players, a couple of second-year players, mostly first-year players on the Sheridan Bruins. So. Even your second player, second year players have to come up big as veterans and act as leaders in the locker room. Yeah, 15 players on the roster for the Bruins, and seven of them are first year players. So it's still a young team trying to get accustomed into the role in the OCAA. These are new players, obviously, and it was kind of a similar story last year with the Bruins when we got to call the games here and we saw them play against the Hawks. As Humber will take the ball and Cass Andrews with the serve. Sheridan, Diamond Bodies, unable to get that third one over. Yeah, Brittany Dunlop trying to get that final touch and get it over the net with a diving effort, but just not able to get there in time. Humberhawks starting to find the rhythm and trying to turn the tide over here. And that serve going a little bit too far off of Andrews. Now, Madison Forrest. Be the one to serve. Good serve in the backcourt, but a better first ball. Pass and a big hit. Alex Dubé. Yeah, coming up big, Alex Dubé. On the year, you know, Alex Dubé, five matches, seven kills coming into the game. And already, I believe, half of that total, so she's having herself a phenomenal start to this match. And a big kill on the side. That was number six, Megan Hunt. Yeah, Megan Hunt, another, another player that's very, very key in this, in this roster. There you take a look at that one. Here comes the serve from Pecos. And Megan Hunt was just there. Hitting the net, and it'll go towards the Hawks. So the Hawks get the ball. And the ball went up for Sheridan. And they just came down and just pulled the net down. Tiana Stevenson, serve. Big hit over. And Dubé trying to find another spot, unable to. Sheridan gets away with it this time. Trying to set something up. It's Hunt hitting it over. Nice back and forth we have here. Armstrong going out to Hunt. And just missing the line. Never mind. Yeah. Judge. <laughs> the judge at the side saying that it did in fact hit the line. Yeah, point going towards Megan Hunt. Such a precise attack. Like you said, that was a good rally, but Megan Hunt just finding that little open space on the court. Quick ball going out. Cindy Ferguson on the bench getting involved on that one. You gotta stay awake even when you're on the bench. Never know what's gonna happen. A diving body, a ball coming soaring at you. It happens. Hey, we've seen it happen. 
We've had a, we've had a volleyball come over to our broadcast table here once or twice. Heads up play right there by the setter, Armstrong. Just missing the back line. It'll go towards Sheridan. Yeah, right now, Megan Hunt just seems to be unloading every time and finding her way to her. And you know, one thing I love about watching Humber play is that they're always so happy. But one of the player that I always see smiling, when it, whether they get the point or they don't get the point, is Megan Hunt. She always has a smile on her face, always having fun. That's the key, you know, you gotta have fun when you're playing. There you see it, Megan Hunt corrects it, and the smile gets bigger, like you said. Who's gonna say a big smile right there after the point? Now uh, you gotta say, you know what they say, you gotta have fun to be able to enjoy, and once you're enjoying, everything comes easy, and Megan Hunt, a prime example of that right now. She's enjoying, and everything's coming easy to her. For sure it is. Humber's regained that lead. Up 9-8 here in set two. Bindi will just hit it towards the back. Going out wide, Sheridan. Down the line, another great first ball. And Bindi will get it. And going down was Pelotini. Yeah, she looked a little uncomfortable there, but I think she's gonna walk it off, stay in the game there. Megan Hunt just doing it all from the serve. Humber Hawks doing it all on the court. I said it earlier, we watched Sheridan play last year and Sarah Pelotini was on the team and Man, we were talking about it earlier. She was just diving everywhere last year, and she's doing it again here. Yeah, she has no quit in her, you know. Give it your all, leave everything on the court. When you leave, when you step off the court, you should not be able to question yourself. And Sarah Palatini for the Sheridan Bruins, like you said, has been a testament to that. You can leave it all on the court, but you don't got to leave yourself on the court. Every time I see her just diving around, it hurts me. Humber trying to keep it alive. It was the line judge right there trying to get out of the way. Yeah, Tiana Stevenson trying to chase the ball in the line judge. All smiles trying to get out of the way, but unfortunately, point goes towards the Sheridan Bruins. So back and forth we go here in set number two. Over the net, just barely. Tip over, and a dive in once again, Pelotini. Tipped over, but the wall blocks. She's gonna try to send it over. Bindi tipping it. Humber, Humber and Sheridan having a great battle right here. Free ball, see if Sheridan can get something set up with it. Gonna go out wide, no it's not. Bindi with the tip. Pushed over by Armstrong. Going out wide. The block comes through. Whistle blown and Humber hits the net. So the point goes to Sheridan. And Manny, take it away. I gotta get, a, get some water off yeah, that one. It was a back and forth. Yeah, what a great had. rally that was between both teams there. And a little bit of miscommunication on both sides, not able to set the attack the way they wanted to. Bruins, unfortunately, getting the better of that. Now, turn it over. We have a tie game at 11-11 once again. It was served by Brittany Dunlop going into the net. And just like that, Cassidy Andrews comes right back on the court to provide that net front presence once again. And at the back line, it's Alex Dubé set to serve. You see some of the players that were in the first set taking a little break there. Erica Dodd, Alex LaChapelle, and Kiyomi Ellis. Still yet to step on the court for the Hawks is Hannah Manners. Andrews trying to get the quick set going for her, but unable. Hit over. And another great first ball. It's kind of been the story here for the Hawks. It's just the, the capacity to get the first ball and a diving save right there by Pelletini. And we're going once again back and forth. The wall, but Pelletini there to cover. The hit once again. And man, we've had two phenomenal battles, and Sharon has come through both times, but you gotta give props to the libero number six. Yeah, Palatini just absolutely killing it right there. Take a look at that. She was everywhere on that play, and look at the energy after every time she makes contact with the ball. Palatini 
leading my example on the court. Cass Andrews, it was another good attempt, but Cass Andrews able to put it in a great spot. I'm just curious as to how many diving bruises Palatini probably gets after every game. She's giving it her all. Yeah, she's gonna be a walking, just uh, just a walking ice bath at the end of this match. Hit over and just out of play. Heads up there by Megan Hunt to let it go. You know, Manny, we were talking, saying, you know, on the side of Humber, whether the point is for or not, Megan Hunt always the one smiling. Same go on the side of Sheridan. Pellizzini, doesn't matter what's going on, she's screaming, smiling, just having fun. Yeah, always bringing the energy, trying to get the team going and rallying them up. Try to get it and just yeah. out of the block. I believe that was Tiana Stevenson that was the one that got the block. 14-13 here in set number two. Yeah, Bruins giving the Hawks a little bit of a chase, keeping it tight and close. And lands inside. Sheridan gets the point. Yeah, Madison Forrest finds the back of the court there, just catches the inside edge. Talk about Madison Forrest. 49 kills entering into this game on the side of the Bruins, so uh, top heavy attacker on the side of Sheridan. Yeah, you, we, we've been highlighting a lot of Sarah Pelletini. We got to look, you know, Brittany Dunlop. 122 assists, and like you said, Madison Forrest, 49 kills. Probably more now. That was coming. Those were the stats coming into the game. Obviously, those can those change throughout. Yeah, right now in this in this set in this second set itself, she has three kills. So take it to 52 there. Exactly. And serve just into the net there. It was newly entered Abby Ellis. And she'll be switched out for Sarah Pelletini. Sarah Bindi goes to the line for the Hawks. Quick set to the middle, but the wall coming up big. Cass Andrews. Cassidy Andrews just coming up big, like you said. A great wall of Hummer. And just, you know, the lead change, the points just go back and forth here. 16-15 now for Humber. Trying to go wide off the block, but it will be called Humber ball. I believe that might have hit the post. Nope. So rough signals, I believe, four hits? I believe so, yeah. The four, two, two players making contact with the ball at the same time. Another great serve over by Bindi. Hard hit and a... Got to give credit where credit is due. Madison Forrest finding that back line and painting the picture perfect. Got to, got to give credit where credit's due. Take another look. Yeah, Madison Forrest has done that quite a few times in this game. Just catches the inside edge. Take a look right here. And it's just picture perfect on that back line. I believe somebody at the wall touched the net for the side of the Hawks, so Sheridan will get the ball as we're coming out of that replay right there. And Coach, Coach Wilkins is going to have a word with uh, the last call there and Stephanie Armstrong having a chat on behalf of Coach Wilkins. Coach Wilkins getting the explanation there from the floor general, as, uh, as I'll put it. Got to give props to these, you know, captains on the floor. They got to run back and forth between the ref and the coach, just <laughs> being the translator between the two. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got to keep your, conserve your energy in those moments. And tried to keep me. I lost my wording there, Randy, but they tried to keep it alive with the Hawks there off of that kill, but it was just too hard. And it sliced off the hands. Yeah, Reese Olet showing great reflexes there, trying to make contact with the ball, but just not able to elevate enough for Cassidy Andrews to get control of it. And just like that, once again, we're tied, and we've seen that quite a few times in this set. The Bruins take the lead and unfortunately not able to take advantage of it. Take a look at that again. 
Aishan Pekas. Pekas is the one to Ace by Cass Andrews. Humber up 19-18 set two. It's keeping things interesting here as we progress on. Try to tip it over, but Humber expecting it. Going to Dubay. Megan Hunt now trying to get it over, but Sheridan will keep it up and alive. Forced though on the diving bodies of the Bruins. Not able to get to that one. Hannah Stevenson. Hannah Stevenson plants herself down and says, you shall not pass. And with that, the Sheridan Bruins will call a timeout. And Manny, the story of this game for me has, been the, has, just, has been the first balls to the setter. It's the mo one of the most important things you'll see. We'll take another look here at the replay, though. Yeah, take a look. And Humber, just absolutely phenomenal getting underneath that ball and behind that ball, getting control right there. You see it, Tiana Stevenson comes up big. It's the wall, Manny. The wall will come up big. Yeah, you see the conversation of the Humber Hawks, Coach Wilkins, everybody tuned in. Cassidy Andrews, Erica Dodd, and there the Bruins having a little chat of their selves as some of the players are seated down. Man, oh. Manny, I wish I was as chill as Howie Hawk up there in the stands. He doesn't have, he, he is no stress in his body. He's, He's just enjoying the game with some young fans. They're yeah. marching down on some popcorn, hanging out with Umber Hawk's mascot. Yeah, most definitely, you know. Record of eight, no, how many, we said it a couple of times. Makes it easy for the Howie to enjoy the atmosphere here with the crowd filling in. Big hit, but going That's off good. and out of bounds. Madison awesome. Forrest, we the one to serve and the luck of the Irish going there. And maybe, I don't know if you saw Madison Forrest just giving the quick uh, sign of the cross, just saying thank you for making that one fall in. Yeah, sometimes you need a little bit of lady luck on your side, and it looked like Madison Forrest was able to find that one. Try to keep alive. Looks like it might be a free ball. No, Megan Hunt's going to hit it over. Almost had a fan, fan interference there, but Sheridan keeps it alive. Going to T.S. Stevenson, but right back over. I don't know if that hit the arms or the head of a Bruin. Going to go out wide again, off the wall. Kept alive, tipped, and Sheridan will get the point. But I think that was number three, Emily Williams. And with that, Coach Wilkins is going to call a timeout. The Bruins, after that timeout, were able to rally back and tie this game and now take the lead. Coach Wilkins wants to make sure everybody on the Hawks is on the same page and they can close this set out. I'm still trying to wonder if, if that ball hit Williams' hands or her head, but either way, Tiana Stevenson with a huge hit. I think we might see it here. It's towards the tail end of the replay. It was a good, dis good job keeping it safe. I believe it comes here. right, right so after here. Yeah, it goes over, the ball goes to the front. It was a nice quick set. And it was, it was right off. Yeah, that, was, that's using your head, Manny. It was not even, I don't believe that was even the head. I believe that was right in the face, unfortunately, but you know. Well, that's using your face then, Manny. But yeah. I mean, still, either way, the ball went right back over the net. But and Sheridan was able to keep and take advantage. Good defensive play right there by number three for the Bruins. And we've seen a little bit of everything this game. Howie Hawks still, you know, just not giving a care in the world, enjoying the, the stands. As into the net that serve goes. BU LaRonda, the one coming in. And she'll be serving. So tied 21 21 here in set number two. If you missed it, the Hawks took set number one in quick fashion to score 25 to 9. And it's been a little bit more of a battle here. The Sheridan has you know, gotten their footing. Kept alive, free ball. 
Hawks will try to get something going. Going out wide to Hunt. But Pelotini is there. Now a big hit coming through for the wall. And I believe over and hitting the net. No, I believe that one was going to be lifted over. Lifted over. He lifted over there. Or just a little bit left on that touch. We're a little bit far from the from the ref. So like I said, I got to get my glasses checked for tomorrow. To, but the eyesight's a little bit iffy, Manny. My suggestion, get rid of the glasses. I did it. Got LASIK surgery. <laughs> One of the best things you'll ever do for yourself, Zach. I thought that would work. I've had two, and it didn't work. What happened, sir? And just like that, the timeouts continue as the Humber Hawks now take a two-point lead after their timeout. And yeah, that'll be enough for the Sheridan Bruins to both try and sides. get back on the yep. same page. Both sides trying to just take the momentum away from one another. But I know we're progressing towards the end here of set I, number two. Zach, what would be some of the tips that you would have for the players on the court or for the viewers at home in terms of volleyball? Or what would you oh, say? Tips, but Manny, isn't that your job? I, I have my own views. I just I just <laughs> have a feeling what, what I, I want to see what you have to say. No, obviously, you know, the biggest thing, I've been preaching it all game, it's really just the the good first ball to the setter. That That's key. And it's kind of shown, oh, there it is. We have Manny's all tips, right. not Let's Zach's. start with number one, Zach. What's you got to go to the one? basics. Don't jump straight up when you're blocking, you know. That's one of the key things, and the Hummer Hawks have been doing that all game. Hopefully, we can close this set out, getting two more points here. Here you see Howie the Hawk enjoying from up top in the bleachers Hell, with some Howie. fans. Thank you for that, Manny. We, we love having, you know, Manny's little tips and tricks. Going a little bit too far was that serve. So Sheridan, timeout used wisely by head coach. And Amar, going back Amar to Bukhara. Going back to your point, just after that point was scored, Sarah Palatini. Once again on the side of the Bruins with the biggest reaction, bringing up the energy. Hawks and Sheridan Bruins keeping it close here. She really is the spark plug for her side. Samantha Wright will be coming in and she'll be the one to serve. Heavy serve over, nice serve, but a great first ball once again. Dubé now up for the hit. Trying to block by Megan Hunt. No, not gonna work. And Manny, we are all tied up, 23 apiece. And yeah. set number two, you know, obviously this one can't end any other way. It's going to be interesting to see how it finishes. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. This is going to be right down to the wire. Both teams giving it their all and not letting each other, not letting the other team have any inch of space. Going too far is that one, so set point. Yeah, and unfortunately, for the Hawks. mistakes like that could be very costly. And the Humber Hawks sending Megan Hunt to the back line. And there comes Sarah Palatini back onto the court once again for the Bruins. Sheridan spark plug coming back out. As Megan Hunt, the one to serve. Ball going to the back. Nice first ball. They're going to go wide here. Off the block and in bounds. So 24-24. Yeah, that for one the, for the set, Manny. That one looked like it was out from our side, but the referees and the linesmen on the court calling that one in. Brittany Dunlop with the serve. Good first ball, quick here to Dubé, trying to tip it over. It's not going to work. Sheridan able to get it there. Pushed over. Humber going to get a look at it to Dubé again. And this time, she tips it over and it, and it works. Diamond body, not enough, but Manny, since it's tied 24-24, team's got to win by two. So, yeah. Humber needs one more point. Now it's set point for Humber. If Sheridan scores again, obviously it'll go back to the two, point, two points needed, but right now, set point. Going back, push to the backside, kept alive. It's going to be a free ball. Sheridan going to try to get something going with this one. Going back. Big hit. And once again, we are all tied up 25 apiece. Shout out to, to Miu Lorando. Yeah, we were talking about the diving efforts of Sarah Palatini on the other side. Miu Lorando with a huge dive. Actually got, ended up run, sliding into the into wall. Check into those cables, see if they're still plugged in, and if the wall's still standing. But like I said, the team has to win by two. So now, if Sheridan scores here, 
They'll have to get one more point. Same thing with Humber. If Humber scores, they'll have to get one more. Nice serve. Sheridan will get a free play out of this one. Going up, hard hit, block comes through, but Pelotini's there to cover. Quick set to Andrews. Yeah, Cassidy Andrews putting all her force behind that one. And Madison Forrest up close, just not able to get behind that. And it's textbook there for number 15. Cassidy Andrews said it's time for full power and just absolutely unloaded on that one. Stephanie Armstrong now. First ball trying to come through. She's runs from the service line to the set. Diving again is Sarah Pelletini. This time unable to get it. It's Cass Andrews. Cassidy Andrews finding the open space, getting Humberhawks the set, and Coach Wilkins walking back to the bench with a big smile, getting the job done. Right time for the timeouts used for Coach Wilkins and uh, the Sheridan Bruins coach, both utilizing timeouts in a very strategic way to stay in the game in that set. That was a back and forth effort. We gotta take another look at it, Manny. I, I'm more impressed at Sarah Pel Pelotini and how she was able to get that the, the first block. Obviously, because of the first dive, she had out of position for the second one. And Cass Andrews, experienced as ever, able to take in and see that and just put the ball where you need to put it, where nobody's covering. Yeah, found found the space between two players of the Sheridan Bruins in no man's land. Cassidy Andrews put that ball and given Humber Hawks the edge. And now we have the third and final, third and possibly the final set, I should say, if the Hawks can get the job done. And, and uh, like you said, they've only lost three or four sets throughout the season, making it 14%. Hawks have been sensational once they get 2-0 and and usually are able to close the game out 3-0. and So coming into this game, Manny, the Sheridan Bruins are actually the fourth lowest in the OCAA when it comes to points per set, averaging roughly around 8.8. .8. So they, av they averaged that in the first set when they scored nine, but that second one, oh, but hold on, man. We got to stop because it's trivia time once again. And I got to ask you, in what country was volleyball invented? And Manny, I'll give you a bonus point if you give me the act if you give me the actual year it was invented. I know the year was 1800s. I can't remember the exact year, but I do know volleyball was invented in USA. And the reason why I know that is because the beach volleyball was invented in USA in 1964 in Atlanta, and it came off of volleyball as a couple of players. <laughs> friends just wanted to go play volleyball at a beach, right. but I do know it was in the States. I will give you half a point, half an extra point for getting the 18 right. It was 1895 in Massachusetts that volleyball was invented, so you got it right. It was in USA. And here we go, the music. Yeah, the song of the tribal chief in the WWE, Roman Reigns. You watch too much WWE, I play too many video games. It's the perfect one-two combo we have on the desk right here, calling Humber Hawks games. Hawks up two sets to none. If you're just joining us, it was a dominating first set from the Hawks, winning it 25 to nine. The second set a little bit closer, finishing 27 to 25. Yeah, the Sharon Bruins made some really good adjustments in the second set and were able to push the Hawks to a little bit of a Difficult situation at times, taking the lead and going up by two points in the final stretch there, but the Humber Hawks able to rally it back together and steal that set. We'll see if they can carry the momentum and we'll see if the Sheridan Bruins can bring the same energy and try to get something going in the third set here. And Coach Wilkins bringing back Erica Dodd in this third set. Or as you like to say, the wrath of Dodd. Shout out Erica Dodd. Making, making my job easy here. Giving the play by play. Also joining Reese Cholette back on the court. And it'll be roughly the same starting six, obviously with the addition of Erica Dodd coming back. She sat out that second set. And I believe on the side of Sheridan, it is the same starting six as well. 
So here we go. Things are ready to kick off in set number three. And Dubé already going. And getting another one right there. A nice kind of a Kiyomi Ellis-esque type point. Turning the corner on a dime going up. Well, you pick up a few things from your teammates here and there and learn a few tricks here and there. And visible there, as you mentioned. She gets the kill and gets the service ace, ace within two plays. Alex Dubé, do it all yourself. See if she can do it again here. This time kept up and alive. It's gonna be hit over. Armstrong going to Dodd, but into the net was that one by Erica Dodd. Yeah, just not able to get the height on there. But Erica Dodd was trying to angle that in a way and put it into empty space. If she made the right connection, that could have been deadly. Get one out to Dodd again, off the fingertips, but kept alive. Sheridan, they're gonna just dump it over. Hawks gonna get a free play off of this one. Stephanie Armstrong set up to Dodd. Kept alive and just, just volleyed over. And Cass Andrews, I mean, it's a one-two punch with Cass Andrews and Stephanie Armstrong right there in the middle. That quick set is deadly. Now, we talked about Stephanie Armstrong and setting up the assists at the beginning of the game, and she's in her zone doing exactly that for the Hawks tonight. And out of bounds, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be Humber ball. Serve over by Armstrong. Oh no, wide to Forrest. Kept alive by Sheridan. Hit to the back corner, but just sailing a little bit too far. That was Caroline Clinch. And that will be it. That's gonna be enough to all the time out for Amar Balkaran on the side of the Sharon Bruins. But Cassidy Andrews and Alex Dubé picking up right where they left off in the second set. Take a look at that right there again. Sharon Bruins in a little bit of trouble. And Andrews with her jump and elevation. Yeah, with that, it was a perfect shot right there actually to see it though, was that because of how high off the ground Cassidy Andrews got, yeah. They have to try to hit it over her. Oh, here we go. Howie Hawk made his way to the floor. He's done resting. All right, checking in with some of the fans sitting in as the Hawks nest starts to fill up here, Zach. Hawks nest fills up because we still got one more game to go. This isn't the only one on the Hawks Sports Network tonight. We have the men's teams going up. Sheridan Bruins men's versus the Humber Hawks. One of our two for the doubleheader. And Stephanie Armstrong to start the serve. Coming into the into this match today, Stephanie Armstrong leading her team 169 assists. And that's a big point right there for Sheridan coming out of the timeout. And that's kind of they've been able to do that is just really capitalize on the, the momentum shifts in the timeouts. Yeah, very strategically called timeouts, just getting the Bruins back on the same page and allows them to get uh, rally back some points. Tried to keep it alive with Stephanie Armstrong, but pulled it back and well lift called on the Bruins and the point goes towards the Humber Hawks. Pecos now is the one to serve. Excuse me. A little bit of a hiccup there, man. Quick to pass Andrew again, just missing that back line. There's blades of grass right there. Cass Andrews just shaped him. Yeah, Sarah Palatini had her arms extended out. Just great recognition at the final moment. And just pulls her arms back and lets that one fall out of bounds. Bakers, another good serve. And Erica died with the bullet. What a great day, and out of bounds. And shout out, Asian Pekas.
taking the shot from Erica Dodd and then making it. Sheridan gets the point. I mean, there's a lot of fire coming off of that, of those hits by number 13 in white. Yeah, she can, uh, she can definitely put some force and heat behind it. Here she is once again, and this time takes a little off and lands it right on that sideline. And Mons angles it in a perfect, perfect way and just catches the inside edge of that line right there, right in front of us, actually. The reigning OCAA Rookie of the Year, showing why she got those honors. Wise heads up play by Fotoni. Fotini. And like you said, the timeout was very calculative on the side of Bruins. They've been able to pull back and tie this game at 6-6 now. And into the net, that one goes off of the arm. Serving the first. Cass Andrews will be the one going up to serve here for the Hawks. First pass. Good, serve good, and tipped over the net. Ends up play right there by Emily Williams. Yeah, Alex Dubé off of her fingertips, and nobody was able to get there. To get the second touch for the Hawks, but Sheridan Bruins with a little deceptive play. Milorando, no, too much power. She made her way onto the court. Serving the Roses, number nine, Caroline Bush. First ball good. Nice set by Armstrong. And off the block, out of bounds. Humber gets the point. Tayana Stevenson. Yeah, Tiana Stevenson trying to go far back, but Bruins not able to fully block that. Unfortunately, putting that out of bounds and not able to collect that point. Hawks get a break there. And Going out wide here to Williams again. And she gets it and puts it into the hands of the block. And it lands on Humber's side, so Sheridan. Besides that first set, they've really kind of kept up pace with the Hawks so far. And they've looked, they've looked, you know, there's been a couple of wrinkles, but they've looked pretty good. Yeah, and the other thing with that is calling the timeouts. Every time the Hawks are starting to go on a run, the coach there, Amara Balkaran, calling the timeout at a perfect time, and you could see that the Bruins get rallied back together and are able to put on a little bit of a run, now lead the Hawks by two, 10 to eight. Have yourself a set, Emily Williams. She hit that one down the line for the kill. Quick one at Dubay, and it was just a fast answer back by the Hawks. And Alex Dubay shining in this one so far. Gotta look, four digs and five kills. Tied for the team lead with Sienna Stevenson. Out wide, Pekas, first year player. Huge hit. Player from Istanbul, Turkey, all the way from Turkey. Showing why she made the trip here to the OCAA. And take one more look at it. Set was good and just hammered. Come back. Dodd has a chance here. Kept alive, no. Yeah, Erica Dodd. Erica Dodd, it's just terrifying when you see the ball come off the uh, Especially if she's hitting it. If she's just, if it's a tip, you kind of just gotta you know, wipe the sweat off your brow. But if it's a hit, you gotta be ready because it's coming in hot. Yeah, she can let it fly and we've seen that a couple times tonight. Just kind of rolled off the hands there. Sarah Pelletini, and it's a service ace again. Alex Dubé will have that game tied up, and we have a little conversation here with the coach and the referee, coach of the Bruins, or I should say the side linesman in front of us. Just 
make sure the positioning is right here for the side of Sheridan. Yeah, checking, checking for that rotation. Just make sure that none of the players are out of rotation, obviously leading in a point loss. So, good heads up call by the, by the coach. to the net there. <laughs> Serving for the Bruins. And Reese Cholette will come back in for the Hawks. Pekas is now the one to serve. <laughs> Tipped over. But kept up and alive. Williams with the hit. But it'll be Humber Ball. Yeah, this one uh, very similar to the second set. Both teams very close back and forth. Serving for the is number three, Stephanie Armstrong. play at the net there. Cass Andrews pushing him back over. Somehow kept alive, but point towards the Hawks, and they, the Bruins stepped over the half court line right there, but yeah, what, I, I don't know how they kept it alive there, Manny. Yeah, Palatini just last minute diving effort. The reflexes there getting <laughs> I think the she instincts can I think she just punched into the air and got it. Now you'll be able to see it here. Take a look at that again. There, Sarah Palatini gets it over. Yeah, we'll just call it. I think when she went down, her foot crossed that line. If there was a defensive player of the year, year award, I, I, you know, I gotta give it to Sarah Palatini. It's, it's, she's been pretty phenomenal when it comes to the digs. Yeah, most definitely on the side of Bruins. She's been coming up key with uh, a lot of diving efforts, as we've mentioned quite a few times. Take a look at that again. Here's another replay. There's Cassidy Andrews. <laughs> Just punched. John Ert punched it over the net. There's that. <laughs> that was yeah, a, gr she a great freeze frame right there. Shout out to the production crew we have here at HSN and BRTV. On that replay, you were able to see Palatini actually did hit that with her elbow. We look over at the board and for the side of Sheridan, Palatini leads the way with nine digs. Next closest is at six. And it's Pecos. Point right there by Tiana Stevenson. Yeah, Tiana Stevenson just getting the job done. It's been the one-two punch, Stevenson and Andrews in the game so far. Did it land? It did just get in that line. Looked like it was a good read to let it go there for the Hawks, but it just it's sunk down and hit that back line. Yeah, sometimes that those split decisions can be very questionable, but they're very difficult to make. We have a ball on the court while play was being started, so we're going to redo that one. I think that came from the, the men's team that's warming up on the other court behind us. Yeah, their game about to kick off shortly. The Sheridan Bruins have joined to the left of us on the away bench. Gonna go wide to Williams again. Off the fingertips of the block. Armstrong now with Stevenson. As the one-two battle keeps on keep going. Kept alive somehow. And Miu Lorandi tried to hit it from the back court, unfortunately, just into that net. Yeah, she was a little bit farther out than she would have liked to be. That uh, setup was a little bit hectic there on both sides. The rally kind of getting to the, a little bit of best of both teams, but Bruins, unfortunately, coming out on top. And to Dodd. And oh, it was close, just out of play. Yeah, that it, one. It looked like it caught that back corner. It was perfection right there by Dodd. Unfortunately, though, 
The ref right. saw it the other way. I think we need a VAR review for that one. Bring out the VAR, shed of the FIFA World Cup. Now we'll take a look at that again. Maybe, maybe the replay here can tell us if Dodd's hit went in. Either way, though, it doesn't matter. Humber will be the ones to serve. It's none other than Erica Dodd. Going to go to the middle, but it's going to be a free play here for the side of the Hawks. Stevenson going up, and the hit comes down. Deanna Stevenson showing the power. That perfect placement by Tiana Stevenson, putting that between Pecos and Madison Forrest. Both kind of looked at each other, not sure who was going to go for that one. And the Hawks have been able to find those open spaces between two players quite a few times tonight. Pushed over, quick one to Cass Andrews. But the dig comes through once again. Kept alive. So here we go, Humber gonna get a chance. Tipped over and nobody covering in the back. Yeah, Tiana Stevenson once again with the deceptive play, trying to make it look like she's gonna go for a big kill. Just a little touch and tip over. Mixing it up very well, Tiana Stevenson. Take another look at the tip over by Stevenson. You see just the, de the deception when she went up to go for the hit and then just the quick tip over. Nobody was covering behind the block. Yeah, one of the players that used to do that a lot last year was number 12, Alex Bartman. We saw her use that play quite a few times last year. Tiana Stevenson doing that this year. a rotation violation coming in. The rotation violation charge for the Bruins. Serving for the Hawks is number 15. Pass Andrews. And set right there, rotation violation coming in for Sheridan. But they get the point right back. That was Emily Williams. The serving is number nine. Sheridan got ever so close to taking one set in that second, in that second set. They're still trying to fight here. Down by one in set number three. Caroline Coach will be the one to serve. With one in the middle, Dubé. A fantastic dig by Pecos. Going to Bindi. Kept alive. Hawks trying to get it going. Dodd from the back court and gets it in. And I wasn't even expecting that one. I thought Armstrong was going out wide. But did not matter. Erica Dodd coming out of nowhere. Uh, Erica Dodd, that one was a heat seeking missile. Just locked onto one specific. Another look here. It goes over. And out of nowhere was Erica Dodd. And if you didn't hear, it was Alex LaChapelle coming on to take the serve. Tried to hit it again there. It was Dubé. Time Bindi, no, just into the net. And two good opportunities right there for the Hawks. But coming through was the block and the digging of the Sheridan Bruins. Alex LaChapelle came on there. Obviously, a participant of the camp. And forth we go. Serving is number 18. Humber up 20 to 18 in set number three. Trying to close in. Take this three straight sets. They just need five more. We have a big one more. Well, the, the last point the, the diving the bodies inside of Sheridan are not able to get there. Howie couldn't believe his mind. He's getting a little bit getting a little bit stressed out here. I don't think I've ever seen Howie like that, man. Yeah, I believe it was because of a yellow card that was given out to the Humber Hawks just now, and there's a conversation 
with Coach Wilkins and the side line person and the referee. Coach Wilkins definitely does not look happy with that decision, but we're going to continue play on as the Hummer Hawks lead 20 to 18. Over first ball, deep to the center. He goes heavy. Armstrong up to Dodd, and it lands in bounds. Erica Dodd. It's like a precision. It's always finding where it needs to go. Timeout for the Bruins. Hawks up 21 18. In terms of war zone, that was a precision airstrike. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. A precision airstrike by Erica Dodd on that court for the Sharon Bruins. And something I want to say, shout out to Stephanie Armstrong. She is doing a great job just getting to the ball for that second hit. Doesn't matter where it is, she is running, getting people out of her way on that last one. He's trying to see, going around the teammate, saying, move, I need to get to the second ball. So shout out to her, shows why she leads the team in assists coming into today at 169. Yeah, definitely such a skilled player on this team, knows where to set up the attack, knows how to mix it up and change things up and keeps things interesting, keeps the opponent guessing. Here, as you can see clearly, Sharon Bruins using their last timeout as the Humber Hawks are just a few points away from stealing set number three and the game. Yeah, she, Armstrong, fifth year player to Pickering, Ontario, really showing that veteran experience and that leadership. She's done a phenomenal job all season long and she's just doing it again today here. Just setting up her team for success all of the way around. And once again, coming out of the timeout, Sheridan is able to capitalize. And Mew Lorando will come back in. Serving is Emily Williams. She's had herself a pretty good day. Over, Lorando keeping that alive. Out to Dodd, and what a dig. And kept alive by the Hawks again. Once again going to Dodd off the block, and the fingertips of Williams. Erica Dodd, Manny. She's just feeling it right now and just absolutely laying it on the line here. Too far out. Shailen Craig come on to the court now. Twenty, twenty-two, twenty. Quick one to Cass Andrews and missing the back corner. So close the gap again. It's twenty-two to twenty-one. Yeah, another twenty-two. Niasha Jordan Tafari serving into the net there. And just like that, Hawks will get the ball back in. Uh, They'll have the chance to close this one out. Someone that can ice it here. And who else here play herself? But Stephanie Armstrong. A wide off the wall, but landing in bounds. And Sheridan staying alive, Manny. Yeah. They're not going down without a fight here in the third set. Cassidy Andrews not able to get the touch like she would have liked to have on that one. Just kind of rolls off her arm. Up on the arms of Lorando goes to the back wall. So we're all tied up, 23 apiece. Hawks trying to take it this in three straight sets. Sheridan trying to put up a fight here for sending this one to a fourth. We've had two back-to-back -back really just entertaining sets of volleyball to watch. Dodd tips over the wall, but there's cover there. And miscommunication amongst the Bruins players, and that's a point towards the Hawks, and it's match point. 24-23.
Hawks get one more. They take this match in three straight sets. Yeah, Hummer Hawks just moments away from going 9-0. and oh. Erica Dodd up to serve out of bounds, Manny. And you know what that means. Similar to the seconds, the second set, the team needs to win by two. So whoever scores next does not win. It's almost like tennis. They get the advantage. They score again, they win. And here we are, Madison Forest. And that one goes out of bounds, so advantage Hawks. Yeah, they'll get the ball back and a uh, chance to close this one out once again. And Cassidy Andrews at the line for the Hawks. First ball to the center, good. One of the back line hit. There's back and forth action we get. Stevenson trying to end it. The diving body, play off the net, not gonna work. And there it is, three straight sets. The Humber Hawks are nine and oh. Yeah, Humber Hawks doing it all on the court. Sheridan Bruins giving them a challenge in the second and third set, but the Hawks were able to find their game, rally back together, and just put the points on the board and get the job done. Their communication, chemistry, all coming into play, like we mentioned at the beginning of the game here, Zach. And there it is. Game one of two is done. On to the men's game. Manny, it was a good one all around. You know, a lot of players we could highlight. Personally, for me, the two players that made the biggest impacts on the side of Humber, none others, Stephanie Armstrong. I yeah. mean, we can talk about the hitters and how well they did, but without Stephanie Armstrong, it could have been a very different game. Most definitely, but I'm going to throw you a little curveball. Keep an eye on Tiana Stevenson, four digs, six kills on the night, coming in big. Cassidy Andrews coming in a big uh, effect for the Humber Hawks here tonight. And like you said, the Humber Hawks now have a big break, and they'll start their journey back after the break on the road and yeah. uh, I believe you have more information on the for sure before we talk about that I want to wrap it up on here like we said those players for the side of the Hawks on the side of Sharon nobody other than Sarah, Sarah Palatini got to give credit where credit's due I believe it was double digit digs for her by the end of the game but like like you said Humber Hawks we are done and the women's team will go on the road January 14th against Burial. So stay tuned for that one. They go on a long break, but don't go anywhere. We have the men's game coming up next. So get some food, use the bathroom, do whatever you gotta do, but tune back in to HSN.